In this video, we're going to take our first look at a subject known as electrochemistry. Uh, so this builds on a subject from first semester that we learned uh, known as redox, oxidation reduction reactions. And one of the classic examples of this is the reaction between copper sulfate dissolved in water reacting with zinc solid. That creates zinc sulfate dissolved in water and copper solid. We did this reaction a number of times in the lab first semester. Uh, and what you notice is you start with a, uh, the copper sulfate solution is blue, and we add a metal, in this case zinc, uh, and that metal dissolves, whereas the blue color from the copper sulfate fades as the copper is gradually turned into solid um, copper, which appears as a brown solid that collects usually on the, on the original zinc uh, piece that we add to the solution. All right, so uh, if you remember at the atomic level, what's happening is that you have zinc atoms in a lattice, and you have copper sulfate ions out here in the solution, and they're floating around, and what happens is at some point, a zinc atom will collide with, a copper ion really will collide with a zinc atom, and the zinc will transfer two of its electrons to the coppers, right? So we have these electrons that get transferred, all right? And what that does, um, if that happens two or three times, What then happens is that the um, we end up with a solution with zinc ions floating around in it. Notice I'm not showing the sulfates, they're just spectators, so we're not too worried about them. The zincs have lost two electrons, so that makes them two plus charged. And now the copper has gained two electrons, bringing its charge down to zero, right? So now these are copper zero, and these are just solid copper. Right, and these uh, zinc ions will be now floating in the solution. So remember that that's redox. Redox is at the atomic level is just the transfer of electrons, right? Um, the copper is getting reduced, the zinc is getting oxidized. Remember also from first semester that we can treat these as separate reactions called half reactions, right? And half, if we divide this into half reactions, we would say that the zinc has been transformed into zinc 2 plus, giving off two electrons, just as we see in our diagram here, it's giving up two electrons, whereas the copper is receiving two electrons, so the copper 2 plus ions are receiving two electrons, turning into copper zero in the solid state, all right? And a lot of times we put a zero up here on these just to emphasize that they're zero, even though we don't really have to. In, um, so that's redox, as we learned at first semester, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing but in two separate beakers. Now this is, the, this is what's remarkable about electrochemistry is that we can actually take a reaction that first semester we had to do in one beaker. We can actually do the reaction in two separate beakers. The way we do that is that we connect our piece, a piece of copper to a piece of zinc with a uh, copper wire, all right? Uh, copper is traditionally used here just because um, not because we happen to be using copper in the example, but because it's really a good electrical conductor. All right, <clears throat> and what's going to happen is that the same thing that we saw in one beaker happens in two. So over in this beaker, we are going to have copper ions gain two electrons and turn into copper solid. And over here, we're going to have zinc solid turn into zinc ions and give up two electrons. Now where are those electrons gonna go? Actually, the electrons are gonna go into the wire, all right, and they're gonna travel, those electrons are gonna travel through the wire over here to the copper, where they will now add to the copper ions in solution, and the copper two plus ions that are floating around in solution will actually join onto the copper um, strip that we put in solution, and at the same time, it's gonna gain those electrons and turn into copper zero. All right, so um, in the process, as those electrons travel through that wire, they actually can give up some energy to something like, say, a light bulb. This is my crappy drawing of a light bulb. You'll excuse me, I'm a chemist, not an artist. But um, so as they do that, um, we'll, they could light a light bulb. What we're actually gonna do most of the time, um, starting tomorrow, is that we are going to replace the light bulb here with a voltmeter and measure the voltage 
of those electrons as they transfer. But for today, we're just trying to emphasize that this is really how you would uh, utilize this cell to, um, to power something like a light bulb. In fact, what you've created here in this cell, um, in which you have copper sulfate solution next to a copper ion, zinc sulfate solution next to a uh, strip, zinc sulfate solution next to a zinc strip, you, what you've really created here is a battery. And although modern batteries don't look like this, the all it's the exact same chemistry going on inside a Duracell battery or inside your phone or your iPad at any time. So there's one other trick that has to happen though, which is that there's a charge problem created here because two plus ions are getting consumed in this beaker, two plus ions are getting generated in this beaker, and those ion charges have to be offset somehow. We do that by utilizing something called a salt bridge, and that's this that's what I'm representing with this upside down U-shaped thing here. In the lab, a lot of times we'll use a piece of string soaked in solution uh, or a piece of chromatography paper, or sometimes we'll actually use a um, U-shaped piece of glass that has, um, that has uh, gelatin, basically jello, with ions in it um, uh, that we can connect the two beakers with. So any of those will work, uh, but the salt bridge has to contain counter ions, a favorite one to use especially in this case, is um, that we would fill this um, salt bridge up with potassium nitrate ions, all right? And what's gonna happen is that as the two plus ions are consumed over here, we're gonna replace those ions because potassium ions are going to then come out of the salt bridge and into this solution. And at the same time as we create more two plus ions on this side, the negatively charged ion in this case nitrate, is going to come out of the salt bridge into this solution over here, and that's going to allow us to um, keep, or it's going to allow the system to keep the charge balanced. Nature will not let you generate two plus ions without something to offset them, so this salt bridge, which has extra ions in it, precisely because we've soaked that salt bridge in some potassium nitrate solution, is going to provide those negative ions to offset the two plus ions that get created, and it's going to generate the positive charged ions on this side to replace the positive charged ions that are, that are consumed on this side. So basically what we've made here is a battery and um, we are, um, we're gonna learn in the next lesson how to uh, predict which direction the electrons are gonna go, going to go. But for now, um, there's one piece of additional vocabulary that we wanna have. Um, notice that um, this is gaining electrons, so this is reduction on this side. This is losing electrons, so this is oxidation. Remember our mnemonic of Leo the lion says grr, so this is losing electrons. That's Leo, that's oxidation. Over here we're gaining electrons, grr, that's reduction. Reduction takes place at, we're gonna call at, at a location that we're gonna call the cathode, okay? Reduction and cathode are always going together. Oxidation is always going to go together with a location known as the anode, and it's actually the, the strip. Um, so we're going to call the zinc strip the anode, and we're going to call the copper strip here the cathode. And the way you remember these is that oxidation begins with a vowel, and so does anode. Reduction starts with a consonant, and so does cathode. That's how you remember those. Um, so the anode is always going to be the place where electrons are given up into the wire, and then the cathode is always going to be receiving the electrons. The cathode is always going to be the place where reduction is occurring for that reason. The anode is always the place where oxidation is going to be occurring. All right, in the next lesson we'll learn how to deal with predicting uh, which uh, metal strip is the cathode and, I and anode. But for now we just need to, be, to know that if we're given a direction of electron flow or if we're given these reactions that we can properly label, the cathode and anode, that we can properly figure out which direction the electrons are going and or, depending on which thing we're given, which direction the ions are coming out of the salt bridge.